Last year, if Arturo spent $12,000 on his mortgage payments, real estate taxes, and home insurance, how much should he spend on his real estate taxes? So I'm going to represent mortgage payments as M, real estate taxes as T, and home insurance as I. And so we have that M plus T plus I equals 12,000. And what we'd like to be able to figure out is individually what is the value of T. Well, statement number one tells us last year the total amount that our Arturo spent on real estate taxes and home insurance was 33% of the amount that he spent on mortgage payments. So taxes plus insurance equals 33 and a third percent, which is actually just equal to the fraction one third, one third of mortgage payments. Well, this is interesting because what we could do is glom T plus I together as a single thing. And so let's call that just K. So K equals one third M. And then in the equation that we're given, we can also combine the T plus I. So then we get M plus K equals 12,000. So this is two equations with two unknowns. We'd be able to solve for M and solve for K. So then we'd know the actual numerical value of T plus I. But the problem is we would not be able to separate out how much was taxes and how much was insurance. So even with everything that we'd be able to solve for it with statement number one, we would not be able to get the actual numerical value of T. So by itself, statement number one is insufficient. Now forget statement number one. Let's focus on statement number two. Statement number two tells us last year the amount that Arturo spent on his real estate taxes was 20% of the total amount he spent on mortgage payment and home insurance. So the amount he spent in taxes is 20% 0.2 times mortgage plus insurance. Okay, well, a similar trick now. We're going to glom together M and I, and I'm just going to call that that's some quantity Q. So T equals 0.2 times Q. And then the given equation, we can write that as T plus Q equals 12,000. Well, now we have two equations with two unknowns. We can solve for T and we can solve for Q. Well, Q we don't care about too much, but the point is we can solve for T. So this combination here is sufficient. So statement number one is insufficient. Statement number two is sufficient. Answer choice B.